by the time we get to Rashtgar v. Goldberg, I don't think anyone has a good idea um, of what, where intermediate scrutiny actually is, um, outside of the fact that it is somewhere between rational basis and strict scrutiny. Um, but the actual where we would put that on the continuum, it shifts dramatically. So in this case, uh, we're dealing with um, the male only draft registration. Um, so it deals primarily with the Military Selective Service Act of 1980, um, which authorized the president to require um, men ages 18 to 26 to register for the draft. Um, and uh, only men ages 18 to 26. Women were not required under the Selective Service Act um, to register for the draft. Uh, and so in, in this case, very clearly, um, the district court found that you can just assume what the suit is. Um, an individual brought suit claiming that it was gender-based discrimination, that women did not have to apply for the draft in the same way that men did. Um, the district court in this case found that the male only aspect of the law violated the due process clause of the Fifth Amendment. Remember, we're dealing with federally based laws, so we're not talking about the 14th Amendment, which is for the state, we're talking about the Fifth Amendment. So it has to be the due process clause of the Fifth Amendment. When the Supreme Court reviews this case, they reverse it. Um, ultimately upholding the male only aspect of the Social Security Act. Um, So we need to think about the degree to which the nature of intermediate scrutiny has been shifting. Um, and also who's writing the majority opinion. The majority opinion in this case is written by Rehnquist. Um, Rehnquist is notable for not wanting uh, intermediate scrutiny to exist um, and thinking that cases, cases that discriminate on the basis of gender should be reviewed under a rational basis test. Um, Rehnquist lowers the test in this case. Um, he argues that the government goal has to simply be substantially the law has to be substantially related to the government's goal. That's basically rational basis. He uses the language of intermediate scrutiny. He articulates the idea of intermediate scrutiny, but when he actually gets to the text and describes the test and how they're actually going to review it, he uses language that is very similar to the rational basis test. Um, he, he argues that the purpose of registration was to prepare for a draft of combat troops. Since women are excluded from combat, Congress concluded that it's not necessary in the, in the event of a draft and therefore decided not to register with them. Men and women, because of combat restrictions on women, are not similarly situated for the purposes of the draft. So he makes the argument that there's no problem with similar situation because the only purpose of a draft is to make combat ready troops. And as women at this time were excluded from combat, um, this wasn't similarly situated individuals, that the, this distinction on the basis of gender was constitutional. Th there were three dissents, uh, Justice White and Justice Brennan dissent. Um, they argue that excluding women from combat in and of itself is not unconstitutional, but when only registering men, it becomes unconstitutional because men and women similarly can serve in the armed services. There are around, at the time that the opinion was written, there was around 80,000 women slated in non-combat roles exclusively so that men could go into combat. And so their argument is that in order to support combat roles, you need other troops and women are absolutely um, able to provide those support roles 
uh, and therefore excluding them from registration for selective service is a violation of the Fifth Amendment due process clause. Understand when the time is writing, even the dissents sound uh, a little bit of out of touch, but in 1981, this was the language um, of progressives on the court. And then Justice Marshall dissents, and he says that surely the government objective is legitimate. There's no question there. The government absolutely wants to be able to man an army in com and in, in, with combat troops, but the government dem never demonstrated that the gender-based classification was closely and substantially related to the government's objective. And so the argument that those groups, both in dissent, are making is that there hasn't been a connection between the government's very legitimate goal of having an actionable and ready army and the law, which required only the enrollment of men ages 18 to 26. That there isn't a clear connection between the very legitimate purpose of the law in question and the law in which actually took place. Um, now, the most important part to take away from this case in my, my perspective um, revolves around the idea of how low the intermediate scrutiny has dropped at this point. Um, intermediate scrutiny was a fairly high bar for governments to demonstrate uh, they could surpass. In this case, that bar gets lowered significantly. And during the 80s and into the early 90s, when the court was fairly conservative, that is where intermediate scrutiny stayed, as it was technically above rational basis, but it was at least textually very similar to rational basis. Uh, and so the test got lowered. In the next case that we do, um, regarding VMI, uh, we will see Justice Ginsburg writing for the majority of the court um, articulate a viewpoint that is very similar to strict scrutiny in terms of what the intermediate scrutiny test looks like. It's almost as though she's channeling her 1970s self arguing before the court, um, asking them to use strict scrutiny when she writes the opinion in which she takes what had been a very low standard um, of protection, barely above rational basis, and raises it significantly higher, much closer to strict scrutiny. Um, but we'll do that video the next class.